before a cell can divide into daughter cells it needs to make sure that its dna has replicated this ensures that the daughter cells receive the correct amount of dna when the cell eventually divides as you can recall the replication of dna takes place in the s phase of the cell cycle within the interface and uh, it's a process that involves a lot of enzymes and molecules before we go into the process of dna replication let us recall the structure of dna dna is a double helical structure in which the two strands that make up the double helix run in opposite polarities one runs from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction the other runs from the 3 prime to 5 prime direction and the two strands have nitrogenous bases projecting inwards in complementary manner so that they form complementary hydrogen bonding between the two strands so this is how dna looks like now tell me something do you think it's easy for the dna to be replicated as it is in the form of a double helix or is it easier to separate the two strands and then replicate the two strands as proved by Meselstein and Stahl's experiment, the second scenario is what happens. The two strands are separated into individual strands and each strand serves as a template for the synthesis of the new strand. That is what happens during the process of DNA replication. Now, how is the process initiated? The process is initiated when the helix is unwound or the helix is broken apart and the two strands are separated. That is done with the help of the enzyme known as helicase. So basically what helicase does is that it breaks apart the hydrogen bonds between the two complementary bases and it opens up the helix so that the two strands can be used as a template. Now as helicase is opening up the helix in one region of DNA, the other parts of DNA that are not opened up yet, they tend to coil too much together forming something known as supercoils. Now, supercoils are not good for replication. They can even stop the entire process from happening. To prevent the other parts of the helix from supercoiling, the enzyme known as topoisomerase stabilizes the helix. So, to understand a little bit more about supercoiling, imagine you have long hair and it's full of knots and you're combing your hair. And as you are combing, 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 the knots tend to get too stuck to the bottom of your head, right? Like that, as the helix is opening up in one place, the other parts of the helix tend to supercoil and that is what topoisomerase prevents from happening. Once the two strands are opened up, they are vulnerable to degradation by some enzymes within the cell. Proteins known as single-stranded binding proteins bind to the single strands of DNA and prevent the degradation of these single strands. Now this whole structure is known as the replication fork and it is initiated. The place where the replication fork is initiated is known as origin of replication. Organisms like bacteria have a small circular DNA, right? So for such organisms to replicate their DNA, a few replication forks from a few origins of replication is enough to finish the entire replication process in a quick amount of time. But for organisms like human beings, we have 3.8 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs in our DNA. It's not enough to have just one or two replication forks from one or two origins of replication. That would mean it would take forever for our DNA to get replicated. So to make this an energy efficient and a time efficient process, we have multiple origins of replication and multiple replication forks opening up at different parts of the DNA at the same time so that the different parts can be replicated simultaneously. And the main enzyme that is involved in replicating DNA in synthesizing the new strand is known as DNA polymerase. And this is how DNA polymerase looks like. For all its merits, DNA polymerase has a few limitations. The main limitation is that it can synthesize the new strand of DNA only in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. We already know that the two strands run in opposite polarities, right? 
this is how the two strands run right so the dna polymerase can synthesize the new strand only in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction now what does this mean 5 prime to 3 prime direction say there is a strand of dna which runs from 5 prime to 3 prime direction so this end of the dna which is the 3 prime end has a free 3 prime hydroxyl group if you remember the nucleotide structure of the dna you have the deoxyribose sugar connected to a nitrogenous base and connected to a phosphate group. So, 1 carbon, 2 carbon, 3 carbon, 4 and 5th carbon. To this third carbon is a hydroxyl group that is attached. And it is this 3 prime hydroxyl group that is involved in forming the phosphodiester bond between the next nucleotide. So, DNA polymerase can catalyze the formation of the new phosphodiester bond only between this 3 prime hydroxyl and the 5 prime phosphate of the next nucleotide. That is why DNA polymerase can synthesize the new strand only in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And also it has another limitation. It can add new nucleotides only to existing nucleotides. Meaning it cannot synthesize DNA spontaneously. In other words, it cannot synthesize de novo synthesis of DNA. But we just learned that DNA polymerase is what synthesizes the new strand, right? From where does it get this existing nucleotides from? You can think of it like a car sometimes that needs a push to start. Like that, DNA polymerase also needs a push to start synthesizing the new strand of DNA. From where does this existing nucleotides come from then? We'll learn about that in just a while. And to do that, let's just ignore all these enzymes and this image and everything and let's just focus on this simple image here. Here I have two strands of DNA that are already opened up. Let's just say this is a part of the replication fork. Helicase is somewhere over here. It is opening the helix in this direction. So here we have two strands, one that runs from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, the other that runs from the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. First, let's start with this strand. And from where does that push for DNA polymerase come from? The push comes in the form of a small sequence of RNA known as an RNA primer. Now remember this is RNA not DNA. Now this small strand of RNA known as the RNA primer has around 9 to 10 nucleotides of RNA in it. And this is synthesized complementary to this strand at one place. So now this strand runs in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction because it is the opposite strand, right? It is synthesized in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This RNA primer is synthesized by the enzyme known as DNA primase. I know it is a bit confusing RNA DNA. Just remember the primer is RNA. It is made up of RNA but the enzyme involved is known as DNA primase. So now we have a short strand of RNA primer which has a free 3 prime hydroxyl end. Now to this end, uh, DNA polymerase can come and sit here and start synthesizing the new strand. It can start replicating this strand like it can read the nitrogenous bases here and it can bring in the new bases complementary to the bases here like say thymine here, adenine here, guanine here and cytosine here and then it can synthesize the new strand in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and that's exactly what it does. It synthesizes the new DNA strand with no issues in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Eventually, this will be the 5 prime end and this will be the 3 prime end of this new strand of DNA. So, the template strand that runs in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction is replicated with no issues in a continuous manner by DNA polymerase using a single RNA primer. So, this strand of template that runs in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction can be said as being replicated in the direction of helicase opening the helix. Helicase is still here. It is opening in this direction and the new strand is also synthesized in this direction. So, the template strand that is synthesized in the direction in which helicase is opening the helix is known as the leading strand. So, the 3 prime to 5 prime template strand is the leading strand. Now what about this strand? It runs in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Say DNA polymerase starts synthesizing from this end. Do you think it's possible? 
do you think this direction is possible the 3 prime to 5 prime direction synthesis is possible by dna polymerase no it has already been established that this is not possible right then how does dna polymerase accomplish the replication of this 5 prime to 3 prime strand well it doesn't start from this end but it rather starts from this end what does that mean a small rna primer is synthesized towards the 3 prime end of this strand so now the rna primer runs in the opposite direction 5 prime to 3 prime and here dna polymerase can come and sit and initiate the extension of this rna primer basically and synthesize a new strand of dna but there is a problem here because this is a direction that is opposite to helicase opening the helix dna polymerase cannot synthesize this strand continuously completely like it did here instead it synthesizes small fragments of dna so only a short strand of dna is replicated in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction so to continue the synthesis of a new strand in this direction multiple primers are synthesized and the primers are extended by dna polymerase sort of in a fragmented manner so finally the fragments that are synthesized are known as okazaki fragments the fragments of dna that are synthesized in the opposite direction to helicase opening the helix are known as okazaki fragments and this 5 prime to 3 prime template strand that is synthesized in the opposite direction is known as the lagging strand so the leading strand is the 3 prime to 5 prime template strand the lagging strand is the 5 prime to 3 prime template strand so now somehow dna polymerase has synthesized both strands but we are still left with two problems one is that there still bits of rna here and there from the rna primer second mainly this is made up of fragments the new dna here this is still broken up in the form of okazaki fragments so somehow these fragments needs to be stitched together so the next part of dna replication involves first replacing all the rna with dna so here whatever yellowish rna was there is replaced by dna and this is also accomplished by dna polymerase but we're still left with the fragments right on this end of dna we're still left with fragments to stitch the fragments together the enzyme known as dna ligase comes and attaches the fragments together dna ligase so at the end of the replication process after dna ligase has stitched the okazaki fragments together you have two new molecules of dna so we started with one dna one double helix but now we are ending up with two double helixes so this is the semi conservative model of dna replication